Slow money. Who needs that? What's going on guys? If you're coming into this video, you're probably looking to answer the question, how much money do data engineers actually make? You know, there are so many reports out there that state either that data engineers make more than software engineers, or sometimes they make less, or, you know, there's so many things in terms of compensation that you can look up. And there's so many varying numbers that it can be very hard to actually pinpoint the answer to this question. Now, before I go into the specifics about this uh, answer, I want you to ask yourself a specific question, which is, why are you even looking into this concept? Are you looking into this because you're hoping that data engineers make more than software engineers, or maybe more than data scientists, whatever it might be? Are you looking for a high paying salary or job? It's in important to me that before me going into answering this question, that you know why you're asking it in the first place. Because at the end of the day, if you don't really like data engineering work, regardless of how much you're making, you're probably eventually going to find yourself in a place where you either feel stuck or possibly dissatisfied with your work because as much as data engineering can be fun for some of us, I really do think it takes a specific type of person. And I don't mean a specific type of person with specific skills or being better than other people. I just mean a specific type of person that likes certain problems to really be a data engineer. Because at the end of the day, like I've referenced in other videos, data engineering doesn't have the same hype or kind of like flashy style of data science. And we don't get to build products to the same extent that software engineers do. A lot of our work kind of is behind the scenes and never gets seen. So if you like being kind of out in the spotlight, maybe being some sort of full stack engineer or data scientist might just be a better fit. And at best, if data engineers really do make more than either of these positions, it's probably not enough to justify you picking a data engineer over being a data scientist or a software engineer. Just realize that whatever job you pick, there are other metrics you should consider besides just pay. Because at the end of the day, a lot of those higher numbers that they put out in articles or the ones that you see maybe on Glassdoor in that like 95th percentile are the people that probably really love data engineering. They really love doing that work and they're really good at it because they really like doing it. So you might in the end just find yourself in a lower percentile and be a little bit disappointed that you're making less. Or even if you're making the same amount as some of the higher performers, you might be disappointed in the work and you might not be solving the problems that you like, which will eventually lead you to either switch jobs or quit or something that you might regret in the future. So just a fair warning before I go into these numbers, think about other things besides just salary. With that rant out of the way, I'm going to focus specifically on pulling data that isn't just on Glassdoor. I'm going to look a little bit at Glassdoor, but I am more interested in information that has to be reported. Specifically in this case, this is information that is reported to the government by companies. So you're gonna see companies like Amazon, Walmart, Target, and different names that you'll recognize that are literally being reported in terms of the data by these companies. So this isn't some glass door person who maybe puts a fake number in or whatever it might be. These are numbers that the companies have to report legally. So I feel like I can trust them just that much more. I've pulled them all and I'll show you where you can pull them yourself just in case you wanna go because this is open information to anyone. The website I'm using is actually just pulling it from a government site and it's really helpful. So let's dig into how much you'll get paid as a data engineer. So for salary data, I'm going to use the H1B salary database because I was looking through the numbers and they looked pretty accurate in terms of how much they match probably a equivalent person who isn't an H1B, at least in terms of like Amazon and other companies based off of what I know and, and who I've worked with. So I, I figured that this data is pretty close, even if it is again, H1B, I the numbers are pretty close. I imagine they have to pay people pretty close to the same in terms of salary. And if you're wondering where this data comes from, you can look below and actually look up the United States Department of Labor source. They just made it easy here to search this information. A little bit too easy because I was able to essentially just scrape all of this into a Google sheet. Let me go over there. For those of you who don't know, there's actually a really easy cheat that you can essentially just scrape a table of data using uh, import HTML, the HTML site link or URL, sorry, don't know why I said site link. Um, table to reference the fact that you want a table and then one just references which table in terms of if there are multiple tables in a site. So quick way of just doing this rather than coding some sort of scraping thing with Python. So that's what I did here. And I ended up scraping software development salaries as well as data engineering salaries. So we could kind of look at them and compare and then just put them into a very quick histogram. Now, the important thing to realize is that these are salaries from all over. So this is not just salaries from San Francisco. This is literally salaries from everywhere. And we're going to pivot this stuff and look into what locations pay best as well. But I want to look at the histograms first, just in general. So you have kind of a general feel of things. Now, I will also add that a lot of these histograms are heavily influenced by Amazon. Like if I were to look through all of this data, like 80% 
of both like data engineers and software engineers tend to be Amazon. So most of that sways where salaries fall. So looking at these charts, you'll notice that uh, SDE2s make about 146K, actually about 142 to 146K. And that's the majority of them. Again, if I were to look into that, it's mostly Amazon that I think pushes this number. And obviously there's some higher salaries here as well, going up to as much as 180. Um, and on a similar note, or at least, you know, on an increasing similar note, for SDE3s, you'll see that they make about 156 to 165K. So if I scroll down, just in case you can't see that. Sometimes Zoom doesn't let you see if things load onto the page afterwards. So you'll see it's about 156K. Um, so it's about 20-ish, 13 to 20-ish K more than SDE3s. So SDE2s, for those of you who don't know, uh, software development engineers, twos are generally mid-level engineers and SDE3s are generally senior-ish. Um, in general, again, I could be wrong, but that's generally the, the thought process uh, in my mind. So if I look at now data engineers, so now let's take this, because again, I think the big thing is everyone's like, well, who makes more data engineers versus software engineers? And if we're to kind of compare this H1B's uh, salaries, I'm going to go to data engineer two. So looking into the data engineering two salary, it's a little more flat. It's a little more centralized around 120 to 148K rather than having like one pinnacle of a Amazon kind of number pushing all of that, which I think sounds about right even here. Again, like if you're an SD2, you're probably hopefully more into this 150K range. If you're in a high income area like Seattle or San Francisco, I would hope you are falling into this range just because of your skill level and what you're doing. So I think that makes some sense. And again, we're gonna drill into location here in a second. So you can kind of see what you can expect in varying locations. But I just wanted to kind of, again, show this first. And then SE3s didn't make as much sense here. There were a lot less people here in this data set. So you couldn't really get much in terms of the actual spread. So that's kind of a bummer. But overall, I would hope you're not making this 127K. And if I go to data engineering three and scroll down to the bottom, Amazon's still paying about 180K for a, a DE3. And Capital Group, which I assume is probably Capital One, also probably pays pretty high. Um, Capital One's, I oddly considered kind of a tech company only based on their salaries because they actually do compete pretty well with things like Facebook and um, Amazon. I think they've kind of realized they need to pay pretty heavily in order to get good tech people. But then you'll notice a lot of these other ones I think are a little bit on the lower side for Amazon DE3s that are a little more senior again, especially in like Seattle, like 150K for a, a DE3 when you could go to probably something like Google or Facebook. I should think Google might not have data engineers, but something like Netflix or Facebook and likely get paid a lot more, at least in stock compensation. So again, that's something that you're not seeing here. You're not seeing stock compensation. This is purely base salary. So that can be a little bit misleading for any of these numbers, really. You know, someone might be making a ton in stock compensation that you're not seeing. So it's a little bit misleading, but I think it's a good baseline for us to start with. So from there, we're going to pivot that data and we're going to see how much do data engineers make by company, not just location. We're going to look at location too, but I want to see first by company, you know, who pays the most. And it's mostly Amazon. And I say that because if you look at these first few companies, right, Twitch is Amazon, IBM, Amazon, Alexa Internet, Amazon, Zephyr, I had never heard of it before, but apparently they pay decently well. Surprisingly, and insurance companies up here as well, uh, Shutterfly, uh, Amazon, I had to do some quick uh, cleaning. So that's why Amazon's lower cased. And yeah, so you'll notice that most of it's Amazon paying the highest salary over here for DE2s. So they actually pay a decent DE2 salary, but you will kind of notice that as you go away from more of the tech companies that the salary does tend to get a little bit lower, which I makes sense. Most of the time, again, tech salaries will always be generally higher overall versus non-tech companies. And if we were to then pivot by location, oddly enough, there's like one New Jersey location that supposedly some person's making 180K. I think this is Amazon. Yeah, there's like one data engineer that I guess is out there making 180K in New Jersey. Someone needs to tell me, is New Jersey really expensive to live in? That's that's a lot of money. But uh, other than that, you, you see places that make sense. East Palo Alto, it's very expensive. Santa Clara, expensive. New York, expensive. Uh, Irvine, expensive, right? So you'll see that the top areas as far as, you know, getting that higher paycheck obviously depends on where you live. But going down to the bottom, you will see below uh, six-figure numbers, oddly again, in New Jersey, highest numbers in New Jersey, lowest numbers in New Jersey, what's going on, or Arkansas. But I imagine uh, in Arkansas, 76K probably gets you 
pretty far. So I don't think there's anything wrong with that necessarily. Again, I, I could be totally wrong. I'm surprised that Seattle, Washington is kind of here in the middle. Seattle is pretty expensive. I don't know if it's more expensive than, oh no, I definitely say it's more expensive than Nashville, for example. But I guess there's just one engineer here again from Amazon. So don't know what Amazon's doing, hiring all these random data engineers from random places. So when it comes to base salary, and if you're a DE2, I would say somewhere in the range of 120 to 150 K base is a minimum if you're in a high level income area, like again, San Francisco. And in fact, if you're in San Francisco, I'd say 150K is almost like necessary. But if you're in a lower income area and if you're making closer to like 100K exactly, I think that's also a probably a lot of money if rent isn't $3,000 for a one bedroom, right? Like if you're in the Bay, it is easily $3,000 for one bedroom. I've been there. I, I was shocked as much as probably anyone else first living there. So that's why again, the 150 K makes sense because you're going to spend about 30 K on rent. If you want like a decent place to live, I was living personally with uh, two other roommates and spending $1,400 on rent. And we had a decent place at least like it was pretty spacious and we all had our own bathroom, which was like my big important factor. So, you know, that, that only ends up being closer to $15,000, a little over $15,000 a year. But again, for some people, that's, that's still a lot of money. So you want to make sure you're making a decent amount in the Bay, but if you're somewhere lower income, it's probably fine if you're down here in those hundreds. I also kind of poked around in data engineering managers as well as software engineering managers, because I was curious to see like how much they get paid. The one thing I kind of was annoyed is Amazon didn't have any data here. So I didn't get to actually compare it to their uh, lower level engineers, but Maybe that's because they're under engineering managers. So I should probably have to look under that. I looked under software engineering manager. Actually, let me, let me just check this out right now, just so I can show you guys how easy this is. Engineering manager. Okay, well, Amazon's not here either. So it's not under that query either, but you can still see, yeah, I'd say this makes sense about 205K um, plus some sort of stock options. Probably is very fair. I know it's like on the higher end, but I think I'm stuck in tech world. So for me, Often looking at the higher end makes more sense just because I'm stuck living in that world. And data engineering managers, it's about kind of the same where the higher end is like 210 at like Facebook. Again, that makes sense. Again, 150K for a lot of places is more of like a mid-level engineer if you're in California. Beaverton, Oregon, I guess that's probably a little bit cheaper. So 150K is probably good. And like Milwaukee, yeah, I think this is probably more than fair. 140K, even though I'm sh I'm sure Milwaukee is becoming very expensive just through the fact that it's a bigger city. If anyone is from Milwaukee watching this video, let me know if you think that this is a reasonable salary. Um, and I'm gonna link all of this, like I'll link this workbook so you guys can look at it and see all this information below. So don't feel like I'm not going to share this with you guys. So as you can see, if you're a data engineer, you can make a decent salary. I'd say arguably it, personally, still will end up being lower than a software engineering salary if you work in big tech, just because software engineers tend to have a bigger stock compensation plan. None of this covers stock compensation. So these salaries are without stock compensation. So if you see 150K for a DE or data engineer at Amazon, they probably have 100 to 200K on top of that in stock options. And then if you think the fact that if they had that stock from three years ago, they likely saw it triple. So that 100K turned to 300k and so suddenly they're making 75k a year just in stock oh i said stock options earlier i meant rsus so just in stock you went from getting 25k a year to 75k a year so that's more than some, most people's salaries in the us and so there's a really big impact in terms of stock and that's why i think a lot of the conversation around salary can be a little silly because you can see these numbers and yes they exist but these are just base. But how much you make base is, is really just maybe two thirds of your compensation in general, especially if you've worked at the company for two years. You've gotten a bunch of stock refreshers. You've gotten your big main stock at the beginning. You probably got a sign-on bonus. You probably got some sort of bonus every six months to a year, all of which ends up taking these 150K salaries and easily pushes them to 200, 250K if you're in the Bay. If you're outside of the Bay, you know, probably still close to 200K if you've got the right amount of experience. So hopefully this was a lot of information that you guys can kind of understand how much data engineers make, how it compares to software engineering salaries. Uh, you can kind of see it's kind of the same, a little different. I think usually the factor that differentiates these two is stock. So if you are looking for the higher salary, more than likely, Personally, software engineers make more. Again, this was H1B data. I'm sure it could be different for, you know, people who are, you know, citizens. I hope we don't pay people different. I hope, you know, people get paid for the work that they do and not based on where they're from. That's just my personal opinion. But Overall, hopefully this was helpful. Let me know. Again, you'll find the link to this below as well as a link to this site uh, where you can look up other things like data analysts or data scientists or whatever you might be interested in, especially if you are, you know, maybe an H1B or maybe you're just curious if you're getting paid enough in general. 
This kind of helps you democratize that information. So thank you guys so much, and I will see you next time. Bye.